Aquaman, officially the first DCEU movie to hit $1 billion. It feels like it took a long time, but I believe this is the sixth movie in the DCEU. Avengers was the first movie to do that for the Marvel Universe, and that was the sixth movie. But congratulations DC and James Wan and Aquaman. Now let's finally review this movie that's been out for three to four weeks now. <laughs> Pretty much covered everything I wanted to say in this part in the intro of the video, but Aquaman, newest DCEU movie, sixth movie in the series, directed by James Wan, starring Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa plays Arthur Curry, he's the Aquaman, he's the child of the Queen of Atlantis and a lighthouse keeper, and Atlantis is going through a shift in leadership, Aquaman's older brother King Orm, or I think it's his younger brother, he looks older though, he wants to seize the throne, but when he becomes king he wants to lead a war against the surface, so Aquaman goes down there to stop him, and maybe become king, but definitely stop this war on the surface. Surface. I think the DC movies since Wonder Woman have been going uphill. I liked Man of Steel a lot. I think Justice League, despite all of its problems, is still really fun. It still brought the Justice League together. And Jason Momoa in Justice League was pretty cool. Now that he has his own solo movie, the movie that he's in, also pretty cool. Now I'm sure like a lot of people, I'm not a big fan of Aquaman, or at least I didn't read any of his comics growing up because, you know, I wanted to be cool. I say that as I just realized I'm wearing a Nintendo 64 shirt, but... But in Justice League, they played up this really cool Aquaman, you know, he goes, my man, he drinks Jack Daniels or whatever he drank in that bar while he's rocking out to Icky Thump. That Aquaman is pretty much the same Aquaman that's in here, but what's nice is they have more time to go into some of his backstory. They give the character of Arthur more depth. They tried to do that in Justice League. They had one scene where he's talking with Mara. Like, so brief, if you take a pee break, you're gonna miss the entire thing. Aquaman kind of has this estranged relationship with the underwater world. I liked that element of it. Like, he's familiar with Willem Dafoe's character and the general lore of Atlantis. But for the most part, a lot of this is new to him. He doesn't really want to be the king of Atlantis, so he's that really good, like, unassuming hero. I mean, the guy looks like he could totally destroy you, so not completely unassuming. But I I guess what I'm trying to say is I really like the hero's journey that they take Aquaman on in this movie. The rest of the supporting cast was really good. I liked Amber Heard as Mara. I liked Willem Dafoe. I liked Patrick Wilson. Amber Heard's father in the movie. For like half the movie, I was like, I, I've seen that dude before. What else has he been in? Finally, I whispered over to my friend and I was like, what else has that guy been in? And he was like, dude, you know that's Dolph Lundgren, right? Dolph Lundgren in this movie, 2018. What a year for the Dolph. Is that... Do we call him the Dolph? Dolph Lundgren was great too. I feel like all the characters in this movie, James Wan knew exactly how to use each of those actors. Cause there's like some big name people. They're in smaller roles though. And so none of them, even comic book titans, I guess like Willem Dafoe, they don't detract from Jason Momoa. Like this is Jason Momoa's movie. As much as he brings it, the rest of the supporting cast does a really good job at just filling out the world of Aquaman. Which speaking of which, the world of Aquaman was awesome. There's a lot of CGI in it, of course, but it's Aquaman, it's sharks, and it's sea monsters, and it's explosions, and like little plasma blasters and stuff. How are you not gonna just do a butt ton of CGI with this? The first time that you enter Atlantis, it reminded me of in Black Panther, which this movie's getting compared to Black Panther a lot, and like similar plot lines and stuff, but it felt like that time in Black Panther, the first time you go into Wakanda. I got a similar feeling here the first time you go into Atlantis. Ultimately, I think this movie's biggest strength is that it is a comic book movie through and through. This isn't like, the Dark Knight where it's it takes comic book elements but sets them in the real world There's no scene like in the first Thor movie where Thor is talking to Jane Foster and he's all science magic It's all the same thing. They go full force in Aquaman. They're not afraid of playing it up making it a little cheesy Every time Patrick Wilson says call me Ocean Master. It's funny because that name is ridiculous but they take it so seriously in the movie that you buy into it. It's kind of like Star Wars in that way. Like, put yourself in 1977. You hear things like Death Star, Chewbacca, Grand Moff Tarkin. None of these things sound legit. They all sound like grade B science fiction. But they take it so seriously in the movie that you, as an audience member, buy into it. Aquaman is able to do that same exact thing. I'm not saying this movie is going to be as timeless as Star Wars, but this movie does a really good job at embracing its comic book origins. Now I do have a few issues with this movie, and one of them could be just trying to embrace those comic book origins. They try to cram so much lore into this movie, which is cool and I like it, it reminded me a little bit of Lord of the Rings, but like a little too much to where the movie loses focus from time to time. Like the first 10-15 minutes of the movie, it's all setting up that relationship between Nicole Kidman and Tamora Morrison. Now I do feel like that's important to the story, but it almost feels like it's a short film that happens before like the real movie starts because then it goes straight into an action scene with Aquaman and it feels like oh this should have been like the first scene of the movie. Maybe you could find a way to tighten up that first 10-15 minutes but that's one example where I think they let lore 
take over from overall pacing and flow of the movie. There are a couple other scenes like that in the movie. The whole thing with the Ocean Master, Patrick Wilson's character, his campaign in the movie is it's ultimately a bunch of pit stops and Aquaman has to stop him before he gets to all those pit stops. But you're going on this adventure with Aquaman and Mera. It's cool. They're being chased. There's some action. They're bonding. And then it cuts to the scene where Ocean Master's doing his thing. And then it cuts back to Aquaman and Mera and it's cool. And then it cuts back to Ocean Master. And with all that stuff, I'm not entirely sure what I would cut out. Actually, scratch that. I know what I would cut out of this movie. Black Manta. I know Black Manta is like Aquaman's main nemesis. He did nothing in the movie. He ties in here and there, but ultimately, scrap the dude, save him for the sequel. He has one cool action scene in the whole movie. But other than that, and a few minor nitpicks, like a character shows up at the final fight at the end, and she shows up way after everybody else. You're not really given a reason for that. It just takes a really long time. She's like, oh yeah, I'll go meet you over there. And then doesn't until like all this calamity has started happening. Pretty much just because we needed a final fight in the movie. But there's little nitpicks like that. And then just overall pacing and stuff. I feel like a lot of those pacing things could have been saved for like an extended edition. But cut a couple of those things out of the theatrical version to give it a nice sleek runtime. But despite those little things, I thought Aquaman was awesome. I, if I had to rank the DCEU movies, I'd say probably Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Man of Steel, Justice League, and then Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad, it, it doesn't matter, they both suck. Like I said at the beginning of this video, the movie's grossed over a billion dollars, so I'm assuming you've seen Aquaman already, but if you haven't, I'd recommend checking it out, especially if you like comic book movies, you like wild, zany, sci-fi adventures. This movie was a lot of fun. So, if you have seen Aquaman, let me know what you think of it down in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys liked it, you can click subscribe and check out some of my other videos, and I'll catch you guys next time.